I want to talk a little bit about some discrete states that are not actually spin one half. And the reason for this is that later we're going to meet energy states, we're going to meet spin one states. So it's important to understand how our ket notation and some of the calculations we've done so far are actually generalizable to really all of quantum mechanics if we're working in a discrete basis. So let's say that I want to measure a quantity and we would describe that operator as A. Maybe this is going to be energy, maybe this is spin one, maybe this is just something else totally different. And we say that there's three possible results here. And these would have numeric values, but again, we're trying to keep this very general. What that means is since there's three possible discrete results, this is going to be three basis vectors. So we have to introduce three ket states, which are going to be the fundamental possible states that make up this space. So again, for spin one half, we had two possible states up and down that span the space. Here, we're actually going to have three to span the space. And we can just name it, each of these uh, basis kets, after the measurement that it corresponds to. So A1, A2, A3. So this is analogous to our spin up, spin down, but now there's actually three of them. So let's say that we're going to have a quantum state, which is a superposition of some of these. And I'm just going to make up something, and then we'll have to actually do a little bit of normalization. So let's say that it is 3a1 plus ia2 minus, let's say, 2i2a3. Two, uh, two so the next step would be normalizing. Now, if you go, oh man, I'm not sure how to normalize. Well, even though this looks different, we're still going to use the same rule that we used before, that one needs to equal the inner product of it with itself. So now I'll try to write this really small. So remember that we, for the bras, we're going to need to take the complex conjugate. And so we have 3a1 minus i, and I've already messed it up, uh, a2, that's my bra state, and then plus 2i a3, and that is being inner product with itself, 3a1 plus i a2 minus 2i a3. Okay, so when I look at this, what do we do? a1 inner product with a1, i.e. this term. That's going to equal 1 because we assume that these basis, these basis cats are normalized by their nature. Then a3 with a3, that's going to be 1 again. But what about like a1 with a2? Again, if these are our, our states, if these are our possible states, this needs to be 0, right? Each of these basis vectors needs to be orthogonal. So what that means is when we then try to do out what this calculation is, it's really similar to what we had before, where you only really have to consider the term with itself. And so this is going to work out to be 9, so that a1 with a1 term, uh, 3 times 3. And then we have the a2 term, which is negative i times i, so that's positive 1. And then we have 2i times negative 2i, which will be 4. And so that equals 14. So our normalized state here is going to be 1 over the square root of 14, right? Because we have to have some coefficient out front. So in this case, I didn't explicitly set up the coefficient out front and solve for it. I just said, hey, what is my inner product right now? And it actually needs to be 1, right? So that's not true. Um, and so since it needs to actually be 14, this would be the case. So Effectively, what I implicitly did but didn't show is that I was doing something like that. So this is what that coefficient is, and then 3a1 plus i a2 minus 2i a3. So really the key here is that we're still using these sorts of relationships, that if you have the inner product of one of our basis states with itself, it's one. If it's two different basis states, it has to be zero. And so you could use the same thing to ask a question. For instance, what is the probability of measuring A2? Well, that would be 
A2 with our state, uh, magnitude squared. And so again, you would go through the same process as before, expanding it in the basis, uh, and then doing that inner product with A2, which is of course only going to select out the A2 term since the others are going to be orthogonal to it. So all of the mechanisms we've learned, the mechanics, is going to be the same even as we start to have more than two states or if it's something other than spin one half. So this is why it's called quantum mechanics. There's this process to it, this mathematical model, and as you learn how to do that process, you learn the mechanics, you then can apply that to more and more systems. So I hope this has been an ex a helpful example of a general quantum state, in this case, uh, a three-dimensional quantum state.